Just to represent and be to be able to perform in this game, what does it mean to you? Oh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's uh, it's an honor. But uh, it's uh, this game is unbelievable. I've been here two times. Uh, first one to start now, but it's um, it's just there's so much that goes with it and everything. This whole week of media and whatnot, but just uh, once you get out there, you just gotta go play football. You gotta get rid of all this stuff first. All these <laughs> interviews and everything. What, what, you just get to the hotel where you can focus on football for a couple of days and, and get some rest. Yeah, it's uh, kind of our little sanctuary. You know, get away from everything. Once you walk out of the hotel, it's it's pretty crazy out there. So, but it's uh, all those things are good problems to have. Did you get it all installed last week, or is the coach dabbling with more stuff this week? Uh, we got majority of it installed. Kyle, uh, all the offensive staff, they just um, they'll keep dabbling with it a little bit, changing some things up, seeing uh, what they, whatever they see on. Don't ever leave a coach with two weeks. Oh man, I'll they'll come up what. with a lot of junk. T- even if it's just an extra day, a Monday night game, they they'll come up with all types yeah. of stuff. So it's uh it's nice though. Good. L- let me ask you this: I spent some time with with Tom in New England, and I know you've touched on this previously in, in a couple other interviews just about watching him from afar and just how he prepares. And I remember in Super Bowl 39, he called me and Rohan Dave. He goes, you know, let's just go downstairs. Let's go through every play one more time and throw out. He goes, Jim, throw at me all the anomalies. And I'd say, you know, so I'd, he'd call to play, you know, 134, comeback, whatever. And I'd say, all right, they bring a corner blitz. What are you going to do? You know, that type of stuff. Yeah. He, he wanted those type of scenarios. How has that benefited you? Because here you're, you're kind of coasting along. You're behind time. You get traded here. You get injured right away. You're still mm-hmm. so young a, as a player in, in how you're growing and preparing. Yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things learned from being in New England was when we'd go through the game plan the day before the game. Uh, it would be Tom, me, uh, Josh McDaniels, and Jerry Shaplinski. And just, I mean, we would literally, like you just said, talk through each and every play, and he would run through what he's thinking, uh, what's worst-case scenario, what's best-case scenario, and just every situation. And you know how it is. I mean, as a yeah. quarterback, there it's endless. You could do that all day, right. but – just the, uh, I mean, to be in whatever year he was at the time and to be going through it in that detail really showed me just this is what it takes to be great in this league. How, how when you got traded and here you're, you're playing well and all of a sudden you go down with the injury, what, what was going through your mind at that point to build yourself back up to get back in there and play so well like you have all year? Well, it was the initial accepting of it at first was tough. And so um, just everything you put in the offseason, training camp, and then all of a sudden in a split second it's gone. It, uh, it was tough to accept, but, you know, I think uh, seeing it from afar and, and learning, hey, this all could be gone in a, in a heartbeat really has benefited me going forward just to appreciate the game, appreciate the moment. I mean, all this stuff, this, the week of the Super Bowl, you got to appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's slide over to Kansas City, the defense. I, we were, I was on the sideline for the game last week, and I was thinking of my days of coaching this league going, you know what, we spent a lot of time identifying for the quarterback where Tyron Matthew is. And what is he doing? You know, this this goes back to Troy Palomalo in Pittsburgh. Yeah, very it's similar. Kind of, it's the same thing. I'm with Carroll all the time. And he goes, he's the first guy since, since, since Troy that does that stuff. We talk about him and the problems he might confront for you. Well, he uh, when you're watching it on tape at first, it, it looks like it's just chaos. And you don't understand, hey, is he doing this on his own? Or is it all tied together? But once you really get into it, it's structured chaos. I mean, he knows what he's doing. It's calculated and uh I mean he's not doing anything out of the norm of the defense it's just the disguise that he does it with is so hard to pick up and different than what you normally see so it makes it difficult on you as a quarterback but all that comes with the post snap read and so just identifying him where he's at where's the other safety and it it all ties together it's just you got to put the pieces. No, it's there. a challenge, and and I bet you there's going to be some meetings on the sideline after the first few series. <laughs> no he doubt was never that. in that spot before, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's coming. Yeah, I mean, when they have two weeks to to prepare like we do, you know, something they're going to have some wrinkle in there, and so uh, that's that's the great part of the game, though. Just got to go out there and play it. Do you see him matching up with your tight end, or do you, do you see him against good tight ends when you've watched him on tape? Yeah, I mean, he uh, he does and he doesn't. Uh, yeah, that, some, that's. I, I was on the side. Like, a couple times he took some big plays away. Right. And the next time he's on the other side of the field. Right. And he's not involved in it at all. But uh, yeah, I think that they do that on purpose, though. It's it's they don't have you know tendencies that are 100 percent this, 100 percent that. It's you kind of got to figure it out on the fly almost. And yep. Going into the game, it's um, you just got to feel it out and see how it goes. Well, it's interesting after. Uh Patrick Mahomes got hurt that game in Denver. They ran a lot of the mug look and stuff with Steve Spagnuolo. So I guess without giving too much away, what impresses you the most about Kansas City? Is it is it Clark? They've added Terrell Suggs. They've added some pieces there. What what impresses you the most about the what you're going to be facing? Well, Tyron is definitely a huge part of it. Uh, but I think up front is where it all starts for those guys. With Jones, Clark, I mean, those two are just 
tremendous run game, pass game, both of them. It's just um, when those guys can play as well as they're playing, it makes everything on the back end more – it makes it more easy for the defense, but yeah. difficult on us. And so uh, handling those two guys will be where it starts. But then, like we were just talking about, it's getting the post-snap read, where's uh, – what coverage is split safety, post safety? Am I going here? And so just putting all that together, it, they make it difficult on you. I had you for – this is regular season. I had you for like 340 snaps, give or take, on in shotgun and, uh, and 164 in under center. Now, that's a lot more than most quarterbacks anymore. Is it? It is. <laughs> you know, I'll give you an example. The guy you're playing, he only threw the ball from under center 45 times all year. Wow. He, that is, that's you threw it 116 times. So here's my question to you. When you're under center – we're going to go read coverage, right? So mm-hmm. – Jimmy's a quarterback. You're a quarterback. I'm as the listener in this one. I'm kind of intrigued. Where is it easier from shotgun to see the coverage? Is it easier coming out from under center? We talking play action or just drop back? Play action. Yeah, yeah. You call it the way you want. When when they tell you, hey, we're having a hard time reading this. Where do you want to be? I guess that's the right way to ask that question. Um. Well, I think each game is a little bit different. If you're if the run game's working the way it's been working, and you could hit the play action off of it, I mean that's that's ideal. That's awesome. But uh, the drop back stuff. So when I first got here, New England, we didn't do a ton of under center. But when I first got here, Kyle, you know, he put a big emphasis on, hey, we got to do this from under center. We got to make it look good. And it ties into the run game and all this stuff. And this offseason, I put a ton of work into that. And it, he, he would tell me at first, it's easier to read it from under center. And I'm like, you're crazy, man. Like, I'd rather be five yards deep. And That's see why I'm asking you. <laughs> but once you get into a rhythm under center and you do it, the reps start adding up. I mean, you never take your eyes off the safeties. So in shotgun, you got to catch the ball, right? You lose them for a right. second, and you might, whatever it is, someone gets behind someone, you lose someone just in your vision. But under center, and this was one thing Kyle really opened my eyes to, is you never lose track of anyone. Your eyes are always up and always seeing everything. So if you could get into the rhythm under center, it's, it's honestly and better. It, it just separates everything. Well, to me, I go back because you do so much boot action that too, uh, yeah. out of it. And that damn when you had Kittle on the fake corner post, yeah, as Minnesota Green Bay. or no Green Bay, Green Bay yeah. is what it was. I mean, it, it was wide open, man, all the way across the field, and, yeah. and how the stuff just opens up. And that was kind of one of those going into the game. We knew we'd have a shot at it. We had to, you know, set it up with a couple different things and and runs and other passes off of that. But I mean, once we got the look, Kyle called it, and it was one of those in the huddle. Me and Kittle smiled at each other a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I I know New England. Obviously, people don't think they stress the run game, but of course they do. Uh, you know, when I played there, Corey Dillon would crushed it. He, you oh, know, yeah. the guy was at like eighteen hundred yards. But here, just how north south, all your runners are kind of similar. Very, you know what I mean? Yeah. Breda probably has a little bit more jets, but just how north and south Coleman gets, and now with Mostert, and how he's emerged for your football team, and then Breda, they're they're all pretty similar. Where you can never, you don't have to stray away from what each person does. They right. all fit into your offense Don't well. forget about Jeff Wilson. Yeah, though. Jeff he, Wilson, too. <laughs> he does pretty good. But, uh, yeah, all those guys, it's just the the ability, and they're coached so well by Bobby Turner, honestly. I think that's where it starts. But just the way that they uh, they all read the same way, they see the, the hole, and with the, you know whether it's outside zone, inside zone, it's just they're not going to do anything out of the norm. They're no. going to play to the offense, and I think when we do that as a whole offensively, that's when we're at our best. Personnel groups, I'm always interested in this. Like, you're – Either every year the one or the two team, wherever Shanahan is in use of a fullback. So you're about 45 to 50 percent of your snaps will have a fullback on the field. You know, and I love it, and I love that fullback <laughs> a lot. But just talk about that for a little bit about what pr- problems he presents. And like, so they got that joker called Tyron Matthew. You got a joker that lines up. I'd like you to talk a little bit about the use of him. Yeah, Juice. Uh, I mean, he's tremendous. He's kind of. I was saying this in an earlier interview. He's kind of our Swiss Army knife. He um, he's listed as a fullback. But he'll play receiver, he'll play slot receiver, he'll play running back, tight end. I mean, it's just where do you want to line him up? And each week's a little bit different. And so when you have a guy That's like that. That's the decode part. Like, they think when he's the wing, you're going to do X, Y, or Z. Exactly. And now you're not doing it. Because he's a receiver playing the wing now. Or he's a run, you know what I mean? Yeah. He just It's that versatility and also the mental side of it. You know, he's a Harvard guy. I'm sure he's told you that. He'll let you know. But <laughs> he, yeah. uh, he could pick things up very quickly. There's really, there's not a ton of explaining. You don't have to put a ton of detail into it. He'll... You know, he'll do the right thing. And he he and I have the same agent. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> yeah, they, you know. <laughs> so, oh, we the, bust him up about it. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, how can you not to? But uh, when you look at how is you, how have you been able to keep your routine the same? You know, like every quarterback, you know, you know Tom's routine. He, every quarterback kind of has a routine of how they prepare. And you've been through this before, and it's 
you try and make it normal, but it's not normal. Yeah, yeah no doubt. You know what I mean? So how, how have you been able to lock yourself in? Well, last week we tried to treat it as, you know, a normal week. And so that, I think, really has benefited us going into this week because, I mean, when you get down here, it's just the time constraints are yeah. so crazy and everything like that. But last week we installed the majority of the stuff. We'll tweak it here and there. But I think having, the, having treated that like a real week is really going to benefit us going forward. What did you learn a, as a Patriot? about either the first series of the game or how the game, how hyper everyone is or how long halftime is. So you're more of an observer in those games, but what did you learn that you anticipate or telling the guys? There's not a lot of guys in your team that have Sue Bulk's beer. Now Richard no. will talk all day, but you know, <laughs> he's, he's one of my yeah, guys. No <laughs> but, but you know, what'd you learn? I think, uh, well, learning it from afar, like you just said, the, the little things like the halftime, much longer, pregame, much longer, more TV timeouts. Just all those little things that go into it, I think those add up throughout the game. And if you had never experienced it, you might be like, yeah. what the hell is this? What's going on here? And yeah. So I think uh, I've been talking to guys about that. You know, just don't kill yourself in pregame warm-up. This isn't a three-hour game. This could be more of a four-and-a-half, five-hour game. And it, uh, I think those little things will help us. How, how are you in pregame? Because I'll give you an example. So Super Bowl 39, we go out there, and, and I'm warming up with Tom, and he just throws a freaking laser, and it goes right <laughs> through my hands. And McDaniels comes up to me. He's like, he's a little excited. <laughs> you know, like that. I'm like, yeah, I kind of got that. You know, how, how are you in, in pregame and how you control your emotions? Uh, I, I will get excited like that. There's a, I think there's a time and place for it. you got to have that excitement, though. That's what makes football great. It's yeah. just uh, the, the raw emotion of it you know, pregame, during the game, all that. And so uh, I think my demeanor overall kind of naturally brings that down a little bit. I th I'm pretty even keel the whole time, and uh, I like to think that's helped me. So I'm going to dig into you a little bit. It's my last one. But, but I want you to think about it when you answer it. Like, I got asked this morning about you. I got, I don't know, Jimmy Garoppolo, but he said, I said, I promise I'll ask him, though. When they throw the ball eight times in a game or ten times in a game, I know you won the game, and I know that's great, and that's really the ultimate goal, but I never met a quarterback. I had five of them in the NFL that, that wanted to live in that world, and I, didn't, I never met a receiver that wanted to block that much. No. <laughs> so, so I know them. They're coming to you. There's a little of this going on. You know, so how do you deal with it? So to, to be completely honest, coming off the field, it was after our first touchdown drive last week. I think it was our second series. Two of the receivers, I'm not going to name names, but they said, we got to run the effing ball, and it was like, we all came off together, so everyone heard it, and it was just one of those moments like you don't hear a receiver. I mean, you know, no. yeah. you, it does, it's not every day you hear that. No, they're so. in my office on Monday yeah. <laughs> going crazy. And I'm sure, I mean, say, you know, knocking well, we will have lost that game. I'm sure, you know, some of that will have come up, but when we're running the ball eight, nine yards of carry, and it's consistently just, you know, getting better and better, it's, yeah, I would love to throw the ball 40 times, but at the end of the day, especially in the playoffs, it's about winning. If you look at your whole season, which I did before I came here, you, you guys, if you look at all the games, you average 31 pass plays called per game. So it's there waiting if you need it. The Saint game. Yeah. How many times did you throw that? 40 times? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, and that's the great thing about our offense. It is, throughout this whole season, we've won games different ways. And it's whether we're relying on the run game, relying on the pass game, and it's, it's everyone pulling in the same direction. It's the same feeling after each each win. It's never, you know, this guy really balled out this game or this guy, you know, yeah. really did great. It's we did great. And you no, that's a good that. feeling. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool.